Hello and welcome to module one of the switching routing and wireless essentials uh, course. And module one covers device, uh, basic device configuration. We did some of this um, on the last um, course, but uh, we'll get into a little bit more and we'll be doing more and more device configurations almost in every, um, in every module. All right, so don't forget to take notes. So what I'm going, what I did is I really summarized the chapter. What's more, the most important part of the chapter. So we're not going to necessarily go over the slides. I want you to take every single note that is written in front of you, and everything in the notes that you'll see for the rest of the video. And when you're done, just submit that as your uh, as your homework. All right, so let's start. When you cold blue boot the switch, the first thing that happened is from a ROM chip on the motherboard in, on the switch, the power on self-test kicks in. The power on self-test is several diagnostic programs that's going to test the hardware of the switch, such as the CPU, the DRAM, and the flash. The second step that happens from another, again, from the ROM chip program called the bootloader, He's going to go and try to locate where the operating system, the iOS, the Internetworking Operating System, but that's what the iOS stands for. He's going to try to locate it and load it up to memory. All right. Um, the first step that he does, if you have the command, if you use the command uh, if, uh, boot system, like you see here, that you load, this is the where the location of the operating system is, and this is the file system, this is the system itself, it's going to do that. So for example, it's going to use the parameters that you typed in if it was set. Uh, did you do this? If you did not do this, of course, it's going to go to step B. But if you did this and you typed reload, it's going to, and you use the boot command, it's going to boot this operating system. If you use the command boot, it will do the, it will load this operating system for you. Otherwise, usually this is not done when you turn on your switch. Uh, the, the, the first thing that actually happens, that's if not the boot file, uh, the boot command was not used, is it's going to look for the configuration register and to see where the operating system is. This is like looking at when your PC looks at um, the boot sequence in the, um, in the BIOS. Here we are looking at the configuration register. If the configuration register, not 0402, has the 0x2102, 0x means that these numbers, 2102, is written in hex. If it has 02 at the end, that means it's going to go to the flash to get the iOS system. If it's not there, it's going to go to a TFTP server. If it's not there, you're going to go to the ROM mod, which means the operating system was not in the flash, and he didn't even find the TFTP server set up. So you ultimately loaded the core files of the iOS, which is in ROM. So if you see the ROM mon here, that means the operating system did not load correctly. Then, if let's say, assuming that the iOS was loaded, then what you're going to do is, if, by the way, that's if that happens. Hopefully, it will, it's found in the flash and it's loaded. When it's loaded, then you move from here to number three. Now, what happens if you have this 42 in the configuration in the register? So what you're going to do is you're going to skip one and two and go immediately to the ROM mod. All right. If you booted up the operating system from Flash, then the operating system is going to um, is going to load. Uh, the operating system gets loaded into RAM from the Flash. Then it's going to look for a startup configuration file. The configuration file is typically load not typically, it's always in the non-volatile RAM. So you grab that and you bring it up to memory. This is when you type copy run start. Start you, You're copying the running configuration that's in the RAM and you're copying to the non-volatile. So you're saving it so that the operating system will always get it when you boot up your system. Otherwise, if there is no startup config, you're going to go into setup mode. This is when you are prompted you know, do you want to start an initial configuration and you start answering questions and we have to type a no in the beginning, right? All right, the, S, the switch LED indicators on the switch. So we're going to copy and paste. I want to show you how to copy and paste this image. So if you go to here and I want you to copy this, 
from the um, from the um, PowerPoint. So what you do is this is I just want to show you how to copy and paste. So you write in here you type snip S N I P. Click on the snipping tool. All right. Sorry, so I did that before. So let me do that again. Let me type snip. Click the snipping tool. And there it is. And you can try a new one if you want. And just, and you see the plus sign, just highlight what you want to snip. And let go. And you're done. You could take this and do whatever you want with it. But what I want you to do is, every time I ask you to take a screenshot, is then when you go, here you just do control and the letter V, as in Victor. And bingo. You got a nice picture. Okay? All right. So add that into your, let me close that. Add that into your notes. Right here. Right? All right, now, what happened if the system files in the flash are corrupted or missing, right? And, but the operating system is there. What can you do? Well, you could still boot up the system. And what you do is, while connected to the console port, power, power off and power on the switch, right? You know, you plug it in and plug it out. Remember, the switch doesn't have a power switch on. You have to plug in the cable and plug it back in. Press the mode button for 15 seconds till it turns green and let go. And when that's done, then at the, you, you're going to get this prompt, switch with a colon. Then you type set, flash, underscore, I-N-I-T, direct flash, and then you boot the flash. This is boot, flash, colon, and this is the name of the operating system. All right. Now we have to create a switch management. Uh, Switch management is for remote access. What happens if you want to telnet or you want to SSH into a switch? Because the first time you're going to be connected through a console port. And right after that, you always want to be to remotely access it. Remember from last uh, semester or uh, last course, we, talk, we said for security purposes, you always want to remotely access your devices in the, in the network room. So... Uh, physically, physically, you connect through the console port. Remotely, you're gonna you, you need to set up uh, a management VLAN. How do you do that? You enter um, a switch virtual interface. So you you let's say you create. First of all, actually, what you need to do is before A, let me you gonna type in VLAN 99. Okay, so you're gonna type. That's how you do that. I'm sorry. And then you have to create VLAN 99. Actually, you could do this, um, and it will create it for you. The default management VLAN is VLAN 1. Now, we don't want anybody to do that. So what we're going to do is we want to create a different VLAN for the manager. Management VLAN means whoever is in this. This a VLAN is like a switch, right? And we're going to take one port and put it into that switch. And whatever that port is, whoever is connected to that port, he is the only one that's going to be able to telnet or SSH into the switch, right? So that's the whole idea. If you leave it at VLAN 1, everybody, all 24 ports on the switch, and will be able to telnet into the switch. We don't want that. So we create a different switch called VLAN 99, and we'll take one of the ports and put it in VLAN 99, and then only that person will be able to telnet. All right, so once you create a VLAN 99, you give it an interface. Uh, that's called a switch virtual interface. And when you type INT VLAN 99, that's the SVI. You give it the IP address, 192.168.10.2, for example, 255.255.0. Now, here's a, here's a couple of notes. Only devices that are connected to the VLAN and configured in the same subnet as the SVI will be able to tell that or SSH. So if you gave this SVI, VLAN 99.2, that means the PC that's connected to the port that is a member of VLAN 99 will have to be in the same subnet. So for example, you can give them uh, the address 192.168.10.1, right? That's for the PC that's going to telnet into the switch. 
Uh, SVI will only go up only if you have a PC connected to a port that is a member of VLAN 99. Also, to enable the switch for IPv6, we got to type this command, SDM preferred dual IPv4 and IPv6 default. Otherwise, remember in, um, in, the, in, the, um, in the router, you got to type IP, UK, IPv6 unicast routing. And when you type this command, you got to type reload. All right. If, if the switch is not located in your LAN, not if you, if the switch is not located in your LAN, then you need to configure the switch with a default gateway. You type IP default gateway 192.168.10.1. So if you're going to tell that from outside that you got to go through a router to get to your switch, then your switch has to have this IP address, a default gateway, just like a PC. Right? That's the default gateway where the switch inside the LAN is. Um, and you do this at the, at the config mode. All right. We'll do this in, a, in an example when we are doing it in the, in the class activity. The second video, we're going to do an actual packet tracer for module one. All right. When it comes to duplex communication, micro segmentation means that... Hello. Let me continue. Micro segmentation means is when a switch port has only one device connected and is in full duplex mode. There is no collisions domain associated with it. All right, so micro segmentation means the ports on the switch has only one device connected to it. Uh, one gigabit per second and 10 gigabits per second uh, ports are always next, I mean are always full duplex. So just remember that. MDX, which I know I talked about that on the last in the last course, in the last chapter, uh, stands for medium dependent interface crossover. This is always enabled on the 2960 and the 3560, 3560 switch by default. Remember, this is a, uh, the command that allows you to have um, straight through cables connected instead of crossover. So we really don't need crossover switches as long as you have the 2960 switches there. To enable the MD, MDIX, otherwise you have to type speed auto, duplex auto, and MDX auto. The speed and the duplex has to be an auto negotiation. And then you can do the MDX auto. All right, switch verification commands. All right, so for example, if you type the command show interfaces fast Ethernet 018, let's assume 018 is the one that's connected to VLAN 99. If you know, this command will display um, information such as a runt. A runt means any frame that is less than 64 byte, which is really a fragment. A giant is any frame that's larger than 1518, which is the maximum amount of bytes that are an ethernet frame can be crc errors this is that means you probably have problems on the cable all right too much noise check your cable out collisions in half duplex that's normal if you see um, information about late collisions that means you know there is collision after you transmitted 512 bytes maybe the cable is too long all right, other commands that you should be familiar with, show startup config. That's going to actually show the configuration file that is saved in the NVRAM. Show running config. That's the configuration that is running in the RAM. They can be different. So if you made any changes in the, in, in the running config and you turned your computer off, that's not going to automatically be saved in the NVRAM, in the startup. That's why we always, every time we make changes, we do copy, run, start right all right show flash if you want to see what's in the flash memory which most likely you want to see what the operating system is and what the features have like if it if it has the security features that has the k9 in it right all right i'm going to stop right here and we'll continue with video two starting with the show version command so write everything that i asked you to write and i'll see you on the next video